Today, the Wynne government of Ontario brought down its budget, which is shorthand for another deficit and a bigger debt. Deficits, even record deficits, are becoming quite the rage this year. Newfoundland is leaping to a $2 billion one, which is, I understand, a record for what the license plates back home like to call the happy province. Alberta, under siege from the oil price collapse and remorselessly aggressive Saudi Arabia, is headed for a $10 billion deficit, which is also a record. In the case of poor Ontario, whatever the number is, it is to be added on to the quite Olympic figure of Ontario's debt, which, as many sad-eyed economists have noted, is over $300 billion, the largest subnational government debt in the world. With deficits being the rage, and it's no surprise that the do still fresh upon them liberals in Ottawa, who actually ran on promising a deficit, have departed from their pledge to keep it at a measly 10 billion. Finance Minister Monod now projects it's going to be at least 18 billion, nearly double the campaign marker. And if the Liberals feel the need to keep their spending promises, will very likely be 30 billion, three times what they campaigned on. That's the ticket. When you break a promise, go big. 10 billion, 30 billion, it's the oldest story in politics. What is said by a political party trying to get in power has the life of a fruit fly and less utility. Take the definitive pledge by the new boys in Ottawa on the F-35 jet. Here are candidate Trudeau's words on the F-35. Quote, we will not buy the F-35, he stated. The key words now in that sentence, in case you missed them, are we and will and not and buy an F-35. However, very recently, Mr. Trudeau's defense minister, Harjit Sajjan, announced, we can't just make a very quick decision on something like the F-35, which to on political ears probably sounds like, well, we may buy the F-35. Indeed, the Liberals are about to pay $33 million, quote, to maintain Canada's membership in the F-35 buyer's pool. $33 million to stay in a pool to buy a jet you have sworn you're not going to buy. You should try this yourself next time you're in the furniture store. Give them $1,000 for the one piece you know you don't really want. It'll be easy to find other examples, but the moral is plain and obvious. Statements made in a campaign by any politician should come with a health warning. Paying any serious attention to them will increase your gullibility, shake your trust in democracy, and repeated exposure could lead to second and positive thoughts about Donald Trump. For The National, I'm Rex Murphy.